Welcome to the first video of the Evidence for Evolution chapter. In this video, we're going to cover this syllabus dot point, which says outline the impact on the evolution of plants and animals of changes in physical conditions in the environment, changes in chemical condition in the environment, and competition for resources. So I'll quickly go over what evolution was. Um, you covered it in year 11, but I'll go over it again now. So evolution in a nutshell was change of the life of life forms due to changing conditions or changing environments. Um, so I'll explain this through using this timeline here. This is a timeline of the Earth itself. So Earth is officially at the moment, we're guessing it's about 4.6 billion years ago, a uh, billion years old. And you can imagine that when it was created about 4.6 billion years ago, life at Earth itself was quite different. So at 4.6 to 4 billion years ago, we call the sort of the molten lava stage. That's when Earth the temperatures were really high, so high temps and just almost purely lava, no, no liquid um, water at all. So water itself was only in vapor form, only in gas form, and everyone's really hot and molten and a lot of lava and yeah, crazy temperatures. So you can imagine there wouldn't have been much life around back then, because the conditions were in the environment wasn't suited for life. Then afterwards, about 3.9, 3.8 billion years ago, water itself started to go from gas into this liquid form. So now we had the ocean starting to appear, and um, this was about 3.9 to 3.8 billion years ago. And as soon as that happened, as soon as liquid water started to come, and the temperature started to decrease as well. So temperature started to decrease, and water started to appear, and we had our first life. So that would have been our first bacteria, would have been roughly 3.8, 3.9 billion years ago. And as time went on, uh, the organisms changed more and more, but overall it was still quite simple. The bacteria were still quite simple. Um, but as soon as oxygen started to appear, so about 2.3 billion years ago, oxygen started to appear in the atmosphere. Beforehand, there was absolutely no oxygen in the atmosphere. But soon uh, after a while, it's a couple of billion years, oxygen started to appear. And that was another big step for life. That was when life started to change quite a bit again. Because if you remember cellular respiration, that was a uh, using of oxygen and glucose to produce ATP. So as soon as our organisms, as soon as our cells, our bacteria could start using oxygen for energy, they could make more energy. And that meant they could grow bigger and bigger and more complex. So that started to happen about 2.3 billion years ago. And ever since, uh, you had a big, big variation of species that was started to come uh, from animals to plants to other organisms start to appear after 2.3 billion years ago. And just this as well here is 0.05 billion years ago. So that's about 50 million years ago. Australia started to dry up. So beforehand, Australia was quite wet. The continent was quite wet. But about 50 million years ago, the continent started to dry up. So there was less jungle, less rainforest, and more grasslands, more eucalyptus trees, things which were adapted to that dry environment. And the reason why I'm mentioning all this is that's kind of, you know, you can see how life changes, not because randomly life changes, but because it adapts or it it changes to the changing circumstances. So when water appears, you could have life that would have come. When oxygen started to appear, you had your organism that could use oxygen. And when the environment started to dry up, then the animals and plants started to adapt as well. You have more animals and plants are adapted to more dry environments. That's the eucalyptus tree or the red kangaroo that we mentioned in the last uh, chapter. So evolution was a change of life forms due to changing conditions. So, and there's a couple of different things. So the dot point says changes in physical conditions in the environment. So physical are things like temperature, vegetation, water, and movement of continents. With temperature, I just mean temperature itself going maybe, sometimes we have crazy cold temperatures, then we have crazy warm temperatures. Vegetation are things like grass and trees. So um, sometimes, you know, we had rainforest 50 million years ago in Australia. And now we have we have more of a eucalyptus tree and bush environment. That changes the, the animals that could live off that as well. The water refers to how much water we have. So again, now we're quite dry, so we don't have too much water. But 50 million years ago, Australia used to be quite wet. And again, if you have a wet environment, that's, you have different animals to a dry environment. So that's water. And the movement of continents as well, that's also physical, a physical change. So if that is not chemical or competition, but, but physical. So if continents move apart, you have different animals on every continent. 
An example is um, a peppered moth. So this was actually in, in Britain. You used to have in Britain, you have, uh, this was before the um, Industrial Revolution, so roughly 1850s, before Industrial Revolution happened. And what you had in your, in your landscape in Britain, you had these butterflies, these moths, and they were white in color and a bit of, you know, a bit of brown dots as well. And you had the same species had either white or this black version. But there weren't many black ones around. And the reason why is because these birds were eating the butterflies. And it was really easy to see the black one because they were standing out. As you can see, they stand out here and they just get eaten. So they get, they get killed. Um, but then the white ones could actually blend in. They could kind of disappear. Nothing would, ha nothing would happen to them. So the majority of the butterflies, the moths, were actually white. But then after the um, revolution, so after the Industrial Revolution, so that would have been 1860 onwards, you had so much smoke and so much um, coal and dust coming that the cows and the trees started to turn black. And if you can imagine now, like you have these same butterflies that used to be easy to pick out, the black ones. But the birds now can't see them properly, but they can see the white ones really easily. So these birds would actually now grab the white ones, eat them, and the black ones would be left over. Right, so here you have a change of the um, frequency of the actual colors, which comes about not because of chemical or competition reasons, but because of the changing environment, the changing landscape, which has killed off these white ones in favor of the black ones because the conditions have changed as well. Right, so that's physical. Temperature, vegetation changing, and the landscape changing, water availability, movement of continents. Also of chemical, so things like poisons being used to kill um, animals or, or organisms, pollution, and the composition of the atmosphere. So remember, the Earth itself used to have no oxygen, and as soon as oxygen, a, a chemical, started to appear in our atmosphere, that changed a lot for the life that would have come as well. An example is the mosquitoes and DDT. So mosquitoes were used to used to be a pest, and still are a pest, and people in the 19, I think 1960s, they decide to use this poison, this called DTT. So this was the poison here. And they decided they would use this poison um, to try to kill off these mosquitoes. So what they did is they use it at, they usually, so mosquitoes usually like um, their, their warm ponds that don't move. So they went to these ponds and they just sprayed DDT. And what happened is basically the majority of these mosquitoes, so more than 90% died. So they killed off most of them, but only a very few, so some, some survived. That was, so this one might have been a survivor. But yeah, majority died, so they were quite happy. This was, that was the first time they sprayed. And then they, they, they said that they did the same thing um, a couple of years later. They tried spraying it again. And when they sprayed again, what they actually found is then only very few died. So the same um, poison, same chemical, killed very few compared to very many. And the reason why is this guy, the survivor, he passed on his genes. And he basically made all these new ones. And all the new ones, they were also resistant to this poison. So then the survivor mosquito, or the couple of thousand mos survivor mosquitoes, their genes went to new generation. And our new generation was mostly resistant to this new poison. Right? So that's an example of how chemicals can change the genes of a species. So this uh, mosquito now is chemical resistant or poison resistant to DDT. And that's still a problem now, a big problem, because um, most of our bacteria become resistant to the things we try to kill them with. And competition was the last one. So, for example, competition for food, competition for shelter, competition for resources. So one example of the food part is the um, toad, the cane toad, how that was introduced in Australia. And now it's competing for food with all these different native animals. And the cane toad is a big, big pest in Australia. The reason why is because cane toads just take away all the food and the food for the other ones is, is nothing left over. So the native ones, because of this competition, the native ones die out and the cane toad takes over. But the example I'm going to use here is the dinosaur and the mammals. So before 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs were big and strong and the mammals were actually only, most of the mammals we had were rat-like, very small mammals. And one of the reasons why is because the dinosaurs were dominating. They just they took over the world and there was no space. That the the uh, mammals couldn't compete. So there was only very few mammals and very many dinosaurs. But then we had a asteroid hitting. So we had an asteroid or something else that killed off all of the dinosaurs. So that happened after 65 million years ago. So you can imagine this big asteroid comes 
and it killed everything that was too big. So it kills everything that was too big, and it killed the dinosaurs. But now the mammals had no competition anymore. And they could just thrive. So after the dinosaurs died out, the mammals started to take over. And then they had more and more space, more and more food, less and less competition. And they, they evolved into all different kinds of mammals. So not from rats, they evolved into uh, tigers and, and bears and everything else, right? So that's how a competition or the removal of competition helped the mammals to thrive and become dominant species. One of the dominant species on Earth is full. So I'm going to summarize, evolution was a change of life forms due to changing conditions. So for example, how water appeared about 3.89 billion years ago, how oxygen started to appear 2.3 billion years ago, all these changes in the, the environment changed the species that came afterwards. And we had physical, chemical and competition. Physical was things like temperature change, vegetation, so grass and trees changing, water availability, how much water we have changing. And the movement of the continents, how that also affects our the evolution of living things. And the example is a pepper moth, how before the, the Industrial Revolution, they were all white. But as soon as things tur turned black because of the coal, only the black ones survived and the, and the white ones could be eaten by the birds. We had chemicals, so for example, poison, pollution and composition of the atmosphere. Um, how all these chemical things could change the evolution of living things. An example was mosquitoes and DDT. So DDT was a poison that was used to kill mosquitoes. And first one was first used, it was effective, it killed all the mosquitoes. But after it was used again, it was less effective. And the reason why is because these mosquitoes became resistant. They became resistant to the poison that was used. We also had competition and how that affected evolution. So for example, how food, shelter and, and resources, how they how animals compete for these. Um, so, for example, for food, how when you had the dinosaurs, dinosaurs were the dominant species, and dinosaurs had all the food and all the shelter. But when they were wiped out because of a asteroid or something else that might have happened about after about six five million years ago, you had mammals having no more competition, and they could thrive. So they would evolve into different things because they had more resources and more competition, and more resources and more shelter and more food, and they just thrived. So, I hope that was helpful.